Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, using my trading platform here, I'll be giving you a detailed explanation with examples of exactly what the put credit spread trading strategy is. And if that sounds interesting to you, then please do me a favor and hit the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out a lot. And so, as always, before getting started here, if you would like to take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then please check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on Skillshare for over a year at this point, and in case you aren't aware, Skillshare is a lot like YouTube, except the content on that platform is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in my classes, you will see a lot of the detailed research and analysis that I have done using real stock market data, spreadsheets, graphs, and even computer programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the concepts that I am teaching. And I've dropped some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. Now you will need a premium membership with a Skillshare platform if you do wanna watch my courses, but if you do sign up for that membership using the links provided in the description of this video, you'll get an absolutely free two week trial. And during that time, you can watch all my courses on Skillshare for free. And then once your trial is over, it's only gonna cost you a few dollars a month to maintain your membership. And you'll gain access to all the future courses that I have planned going forward, in addition to all the other classes that are on Skillshare too. And if you decide you don't like it, no worries, you can cancel before your trial is over and you won't lose a dime. But again, if you are interested, please check out those links below and join the thousands of other students that have already taken my classes. And so with that being said, we're gonna jump over to my trading platform now and get things started. All right, welcome to the Thinkorswim trading platform here. And the company that I'll be using as an example to walk you through what the put credit spread strategy is, is going to be Palantir. And the ticker symbol for Palantir is just PLTR, which you can see right here. And so the put credit spread strategy is going to be a bullish strategy, right? Ideally, the stock we're going to be using the strategy on, we want that stock to increase in price. However, as you will see here in a minute, that does not actually have to happen for you to still walk away with a profit. And this is one of the main reasons why I love selling options, because when you do so, even though you might have a directional assumption in mind when you place the trade, you actually don't have to be correct in that assumption to still make a profit. And so using a put credit spread is one way we can still sell options. It still gives you an overall net short exposure, but it will also give you defined risk in the sense that even in the worst case, if Palantir were to drop from 29 bucks, which is where it's currently trading at, down to zero in the worst possible scenario, you would only ever lose a specific finite amount of money that you would know upfront before you even made the trade. And any form of option trading strategy that is comprised of credit spreads will give you this defined risk benefit. And so specifically the way this strategy is going to work, let's go to the trade tab now and look at the option chain here. And let's take a look at the April expiration options, right? These guys expire in 55 days from today. On the left hand side, as always, these are the call options. And on the right hand side here, these are all the put options. And so as I'm sure you could tell by the name, put credit spread, this strategy is going to be comprised of put options. And so there are two pieces to this kind of strategy. We are first going to sell an out of the money put option. So for example, if Palantir is trading for 29 bucks per share, then selling this put option right here with a strike of 26, this option is currently out of the money. And then at the same time, we're also going to buy another put option that is even further out of the money. So for my example here, I'm going to be selling the 26 strike put option and then also buying the 21 strike put option. So let me go ahead and set up this order. So I'm going to right click on the 26 strike put here and then go to sell vertical, right? These credit spread strategies are also referred to as vertical spreads. So I'll click vertical here. And so coming down to the order now, you can see we're going to sell one contract with the April expiration and it's going to be a put option with a strike of 26. And then at the same time, we're also going to buy one contract, same expiration, and the strike is going to be 21, so right here. And so now that I have the strike selected here, you can take a look at the credit that you would receive for selling this put credit spread. And I know we're technically both selling and buying an option at the same time here, but because we're actually taking in money, this is why you can refer to this as selling the put credit spread. So whenever you are selling options or if you are using a strategy that is like selling an option, 
you are always going to take in money initially. So selling this one spread here would allow you to take in $215. And for some, this might be a novel concept because I would imagine that most people that are involved in the stock market or options markets are used to buying things, buying stock, buying options, and having to pay money up front initially to then get into the position. Well, like I said, with these kinds of strategies, it's the opposite. You take in money initially, and then you eventually pay money to get out of the position. And of course, the goal here is to pay less money than what you took in initially. So if I sell this spread for 215 bucks, and at some point down the road, I can buy it back for only 100, then the difference there is 115 bucks, and that would be my profit. And so now let's think about why this kind of strategy has defined risk. So that, like I said, in the worst possible scenario, if Palantir were to drop down to zero, you would only ever lose a specific finite amount of money that you would know up front here before you even confirm and send the order. So let's think about a few scenarios here. If come the expiration day, in 55 days, if Palantir is still above the strike of the option we sold, which is 26, then both these options are going to expire worthless. They're just going to disappear, right? And that's because... Currently, they're both out of the money, and so if they stay out of the money, then come the expiration date, they're going to have no value. So if that happens, like I said, these options just disappear, and you will get to keep the full 215 bucks. And that would be, of course, the most ideal scenario, right? Like I said, this is a bullish strategy. We want Palantir to go up in price, but really, as long as it stays above 26, then you still get to walk away with a full profit. So this ties back to what I said earlier, that you can of course have a directional assumption with the stock. We think Palantir is going to go up in price, but you don't actually have to be correct to still make money with these kinds of trades. So now what happens if we are totally wrong though, and Palantir falls from 29 down to let's say 20. So in this case, it would blow through both of our strikes here. So come the expiration day, what is this going to mean? Well, looking first at the option we sold, this 26 strike put. Because if by the expiration day, if Palantir is at 20, and this option is now six full dollars in the money, we're going to get assigned on this contract. Which means, and if you think about a put option from the perspective of the option buyer, the person we sold this option to, a put option gives the option buyer the right to sell 100 shares of, in this case, Palantir stock. Right, and specifically, they're going to be selling those shares to the person who sold them the contract. So getting assigned on this 26 strike put option means, since we are the option seller in this case, we're going to have to buy 100 shares of Palantir at a price of 26 bucks per share. Now the next step is looking at the 21 strike put. This is the option we purchased. So now we are the buyer in this case. And if Palantir is at 20 bucks a share by the expiration date, that means we can use this option to sell our 100 shares that we had to buy initially at 26 we can now sell them at a price of 21. And no matter how low Palantir goes below 21, right, in the worst case, if it goes to zero, because we have this position here, we will always be able to buy Palantir at 26 and sell it at 21. And so that means if we purchase 100 shares of Palantir at a price of 26 bucks per share, and then we sell them at only $21 per share, this is going to be a loss of $5 per share and then times the 100 shares that we're dealing with, that's an overall loss of $500. That is the worst possible scenario. Now keep in mind, however, that we still took in initially $215. So come the expiration day, even though we're going to lose 500 bucks when trading the stock, we can offset some of those losses by the initial credit we took in, right? Because we initially sold this spread, just like when you sell anything, you're going to take in money. This money is never going to just disappear. You can always use it to offset losses if need be. So if we lose 500 bucks trading the stock and we make 215 from selling the spread in the first place, then the overall net loss in the worst possible scenario is only $285, right? 500 minus 215 is 285. And so that's why these credit spread strategies or any strategy that is comprised of these things has that defined risk component or that benefit. And you have the freedom to choose how much money you're willing to risk based on how wide these strikes are here. 
If $285 is too much risk for you, well then instead of buying the 21 strike put, you can buy maybe the 23 strike put. And now the spread is only $3 wide. You're going to take in less money. There's always going to be a give and take with this kind of thing. But now in the worst possible case, if you have to buy stock at 26 and sell it at 23, that's going to be a net loss of 3 bucks per share times 100 shares. That's $300. But then if you take in 141, that means overall the most amount of money you can lose on this position is only $159. So like I said, you have the control and the freedom to specify how much money you're willing to risk before you even confirm and send the order. And just as a side note here in case you are wondering, the reason why we can sell these spreads or the reason why we are taking in money initially by doing this is because the option we're selling is closer in regards to the strike price, it is closer to where the stock is currently trading than the option we are buying. And options with strikes that are closer to where the stock is trading are always going to be worth more than options that are further away. So back to our initial example, selling the 26 strike put and buying the 21 strike put, you can see for this one here, looking at the bid and ask prices, you could sell this option by itself for about $340. And then the 21 strike put, buying this option is only going to cost about $125. So again, because we are selling an option that is worth more than the option we're buying, then the overall net result here is we are still able to take in money. And the last thing I want to touch on here has to do with the overall probability of actually making a profit on this kind of a trade. Like I've said a few times here, you don't actually have to be directionally correct with these kinds of strategies to still make money, right? Just to give you a visual representation of this, here's Palantir right now trading at 29 bucks per share and down right here is 26 bucks. So as long as Palantir stays above this line, you're going to make the full profit on the trade. And if we come back to the option chain here, looking at the 26 strike put option, this percentage right here, this is the probability of this option being in the money. That's what ITM stands for. And specifically, it's the probability that this option will end up being in the money by the expiration date. And as you can see right now, the probability is 47.5%. So if there's a 47.5% chance that this option ends up in the money by the expiration date, meaning that Palantir falls below 26 by the expiration, that means there's a 52.5% chance that does not happen. That Palantir actually stays above 26 come April 16th. So Palantir can still fall a full $3 here and you still make the full profit, but even if it falls below 26, to a certain extent, you can still walk away from this trade with a profit. Because the last scenario here, and let me adjust these strikes back to the original example, so selling the 26 strike and buying the 21 strike, what happens if by the expiration date, Palantir drops from 29 down to let's say 24? So it ends up kind of right in between our two strikes here. So in this case, the 26 strike put, the option that we sold initially is going to be in the money by the expiration. So we're going to get assigned on this contract. We're going to have to buy 100 shares of Palantir at a price of 26 bucks per share. Now the 21 strike put, however, is still going to be out of the money. Right, because in this example, Palantir has fallen down to 24, not below 21. So this option, the one that we bought, is just going to expire worthless and go away. And so now that we have 100 shares in our portfolio that we bought for 26 bucks per share, if the current trading price by the expiration date is 24, okay, then we can just turn around and sell those shares back into the market at a price of 24 bucks per share. And so in this case, if we initially bought those shares for 26 and then sold them back into the market at 24, that's a loss of two bucks per share times the 100 shares, that's $200 in losses. So overall, if we lose 200 bucks trading the stock here, but we still made 215 from selling this spread in the first place, then in the end, we still get to walk away with 15 bucks of profit. Obviously that's not much, but even if you are pretty much dead wrong in your directional assumption, about where Palantir is going to go in the future, you still have the opportunity to walk away even with a small profit or maybe a scratch. And actually, if we look at the put option here with a strike of 24 
and look at the chance that this option ends up in the money by the expiration date, the chance that Palantir falls below 24 by April 16th, the probability is only 40%. So if there's only a 40% chance that Palantir falls down to this level, then that means there's a 60% chance that Palantir stays above 24. And now I hope you can see how the odds really are in your favor when you make these kinds of trades. These are high probability of profit trades or strategies in that they can give you a much greater chance of profit than just 50-50, which would be the case for trading stock. When you're trading stock, at least in the short term, it really is the matter of a flip of a coin, whether stocks are going to go up or down. So when you're trading stock, you're really only going to have about a 50% chance of making money on the trade. But when you're selling options that are out of the money, everything changes. And you now have the flexibility and control to not only specify exactly how much risk you want to take on in the worst possible scenario, but you can also pick your chance of success. Right? The further out of the money you go, the more likely it's going to be that you're going to walk away with a profit. The profit's going to be smaller when you sell these options, but the chance you'll get to keep that profit is much higher. And like I said, you have complete control over this. So I hope this all made sense. And of course, if you have questions or if you need clarification on something, then please post a comment on this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comments what you think about the put credit spread. It's one of my favorite strategies and I would like to hear your thoughts as well. And don't forget, if you would like to take some in-depth classes on options, options trading, and stock market investing, then please check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.